Hello! Welcome to the Nerd's Finest. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made my DIY pirate ship yard decoration. I made this on the other side of my deck, and this is going to be less of a how-to video and more of a documentary, as how-to videos are usually more linear, precise, to the point. This, I made a lot of mistakes going through. Um, it was kind of like uh, putting together a jigsaw puzzle while you were still were making the jigsaw puzzle. And also I separated this into two parts. Today it's going to be making the mass and lookout of the pirate ship. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, the first thing I want to do working on this pirate ship is uh, working on to create the mast of the ship. I have two PVC pipes. Um, I already got one already started in the process. They're both 10 feet long. I'm going to be using this 100 grit sandpaper to file down the numbers and barcodes. Then I'll be using this file to make uh, grooves into it so it'll look less like pipe and more like actual wood. Uh, the steel wool is to clean the file of all PVC dust and junk that's going to get clogged in it. And for paint, I'll be using this uh, acrylic paint. This is going to be earthy tone uh, to hopefully give it a more natural wood look to it. All right, here we go. Okay, going to start the sanding process. See, um... Yeah, just even just a few seconds, the print's already coming off. So this should only just take a couple minutes. All right, so around five minutes later, the, the numbers and barcodes are all scraped off. And it's already starting to see um, some grooves into it. I don't know if you can tell from here. But to make even deeper ones, we're going to use the file now and just scrape along. Nice thing about this, because you want the natural look, don't worry about being precise. Just go crazy with it and see how just even after that couple seconds I'm already getting built up. That's where the steel wool comes into play. Something I forgot to mention during the filming of that clip. Uh, when I'm sanding and scraping the PVC pipe, I'm wearing a dust mask. So in case you want to try this project at home and you're also sanding and scraping the PVC pipe, wear a dust mask. You do not want to be breathing in that nasty stuff. Safety first, kids. Okay, so I got uh, I'm finished with the, the file. I don't, uh, the camera's not really bringing it up. But it's got the grooves in there now. Um, so with the, hopefully with the paint, it'll come out more. Um, I'm done with the file, but I'm going to, once again, use sandpaper to make it a little smoother because this really creates sharp jagged edges uh, you don't want to go too crazy on it because you don't want to erase what you did but a little smoother we're going to make it a little smoother and safer i'm all done sanding and scraping now it's time for the actual paint part nice thing about this bottle it's a squeeze bottle so i'm not going to put another cup i'm just going to spray it right on And with the cloth, we're just going to rub it in, work it into the grooves. And here is the first coat of paint. And just seeing with the first coat, I'm really enjoying it. Look at that, it's getting into every little notch and grooves and cuts. It's starting to look a little more natural. What do you think, Molly? Is this good? Yeah, good Good first try. Keep on going. Yeah, you're right. I'll keep on, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna keep on going. Okay, let's try now, ready for the second coat. There are now two coats of paint on the PVC pipe. Uh, I was thinking about doing a third coat, but I'm kinda happy just with the two coats. I kinda like the imperfections of it. It kinda makes it more natural. I'm gonna spray paint uh, a matte clear enamel over it, kind of a coating to help protect it from the Wisconsin elements. All 
I'm all finished painting. Got two coats on and uh, protective spray coats to uh, protect from the elements. I ran out of the earthy acrylic paint for these crosses, but you know what? These are gonna be actually wrapped in rope anyways uh, with this rope twine that I have. So I'm not that worried that I ran out of paint for that. Um, close enough. Okay, now that I got these pieces all painted, now it's time to actually cut it. This pipe is gonna be the vertical part of the mast. I'm gonna cut it into pieces of seven and a half feet, two feet, and a half a foot. Uh, once they're cut, I'll connect them with these T-crosses. That'll be the connectors for the vertical part of the mast. Now it's time to start cutting. Uh, nothing special, I got just a good old fashioned hacksaw. I have the vertical piece cut um, and the T crosses connected to them. So now I'm going to cut this. This will be the, the horizontal parts of the mass. I'm going to cut this into four pieces. Uh, two of those pieces are going to be two feet long, and the other two pieces are going to be three feet long. So it's going to go from here's the top two, two, three, three. That way, instead of like a boring square cell, it'd be a nice, uh, cool angle. Here we go. All right, we did it. Woohoo! So something I didn't think about when I cut into the pieces. The ends, you have the, the stark white of the PVC pipe, and it just really stands out when you see the, the natural, natural looking brown paint. Um, in the grand scheme of things, all put together, you might not notice it, but I'll notice it, so I think I'm gonna paint the inside of the ends too, for peace of mind. Here's what the insides painted. Uh, it's not perfect. That's not too shabby either, which is how I kind of try to live my life. While the paint is drying, I'm going to be working on the actual sails of the pirate ship. I'm going to take this one six by nine canvas drop cloth, and I'm going to make that into two sails. Oh yeah, it's all starting to come together. The bottom sail is six by four and a half. And the top one is about four by four and a half. I'm now going to cut uh, holes in the middle of both. And to make it a little bit easier for myself, I'm going to fold them both in half first. All right, to cut a hole for the mast to go through, I want it to be three inches. So I got folded in half. So I'm looking for a radius of 1.5 inches. You didn't think I knew math terms, did you? I know a couple, not many. I'm not worried that my cuts won't be perfectly flush, perfectly straight. They're gonna be jagged. That's okay. Unlike uh, the band, this will not be a perfect circle. They're a really good band. You should check them out. Here are all the pieces to the pirate puzzle. About 16, including a, a 10 foot rebar. I don't think it's coming up on camera. There it is. That's gonna be the uh, inside of the center piece of the PVC pipe. All right, let's put this puzzle together. Something I forgot to do earlier to add extra strength and stability to it. I'm gonna drill uh, four holes into the cross tees and put in screws so hopefully whatever whatever weather Wisconsin throws at me this pirate mess will weather the storm so I would 
pound three PVCs at a time and keep one open to see if I'm going all the way to the edge because uh, there's a little line here to know that you can't go any further but these I, I can't like just pushing it in I can't tell if it reaches it so I would do three at a time and hammer it into place and then uh, I would take the other pieces out to see the the other end and well this one worked perfectly I drilled uh, I drilled it I was working on the other one so I was taking the other gonna take the other pieces out and I used a little too much strength a little too much percussion maintenance and popped the whole thing off so now I'm gonna have to go to the store and grab another one and be very gentler this time oh well The center of the mast will be this 10 foot long rebar. I have it driven to the ground about three feet and I think that'll be enough to help support it. I'm still gonna have rope tied to the outside of the mast for even more support, but this is the start. Let's put the mast on. Uh, the next part is part decoration and uh, stability. We're going to use this rope, more like a twisted twine. I uh, already got slip knots tied on both ends of it. So I don't have to waste time trying to tie and untie on top there. I'm going to have uh, uh, two pieces of rope on each side anchored with some stakes. Here we go. The sun is down, but my spirit is still high. I am determined to finish this tonight. Um, I can always fine tune the looks tomorrow. I just want to make sure it's safe and stable to last the night. Here goes nothing. Nice. Ah. I think that's enough for one night. See you tomorrow morning. All right, it's the next day. So last night I just uh, tied up the ends of the sails. Example. The top one, it's a little rough looking. I kind of wanted a nice smoother one at the bottom. But the thing is, when you when you smooth that out and tie up the ends, the bottom middle goes up too. I was thinking, I was hoping that it would still stay here, but naturally curve up. But when you do that so much, when you tie that on the ends, so much of the fabric comes up with it, even in the middle. So it's either you get this nice curve but then you lose a lot of fabric, or you get a lot of fabric, but then it's all lumpy. I know it's a pirate ship, it's not supposed to be that smooth looking, but still it's personal taste, what can I say? So I'm actually thinking about cutting 
this. Like actually cutting so like uh, the bottom half of the circle out. So hopefully it still curves up to the sides, but I still get more of a sail hanging down the bottom. We'll find out. We'll, I'll play with it. We'll see what happens. So here's a little bit of con, uh, comparison. So the right side is just a bunch of fabric tied up. You lose like a couple feet of sail, even though you're still getting that curve. So what I did was I just slightly curved the bottom edge and then kept a couple inches on top so I can still still tie rope right here. So that looks like about one, two, three, four, still got like four panels of fabric where this is like one and, and I have already, we're losing it. So I'm gonna time that up, we'll see how that looks. And here's both sides cut. I like it, it's an improvement. And I know I'm kinda, I acknowledge I'm splitting hairs here, but I kinda like it better. And you know what, I'm even, I'm gonna keep the top the way it is. I just think there's a little bit more balance now. I'm just, you know, just a you know, personal preference. I kinda like it a lot better. Off to the next step. Sky cam. Woo! Okay, so I already have a hole drilled in. Finally got the top mast on. There's the hole pre-drilled. So all I gotta do is just simply screw it in. And we're in business. Okay. The mast is almost done. It needs a lookout point, which is actually called the crow's nest. To make the crow's nest, I actually got the materials from the dollar store. Uh, this black bucket has handles. What I'm gonna do is just gonna clip these off. And I'm going to use these skull crossbones. I'm actually going to have one in the front and one in the back so you can see it from the street and you can see it from the backyard. I'm going to use a heat gun. I don't know if you can see the frame, but here's the heat gun. I'm going to blast this a bit so I can kind of uh, bend it so it stay bent to kind of naturally curve to the bucket. And then I'll be using the, the twine rope that I use for the sails. Uh, to connect it to the bucket uh, you know it might change the progress might change as we go along but you need a starting point and that's how we're gonna start it off with When you're using the heat gun, you don't want to just uh, shoot it all in one spot. You want to do circular motions, otherwise you can end up melting it. So shoot it with the heat gun, bend it a bit, and hold it. Then you shoot it again with the heat gun. Back and forth a little dance. Back and forth. Back and forth. Two boxes, a little table. I gotta hold it for a little bit. Probably should be using gloves. Oh well. I got both crossbones uh, curved. What I'm gonna do is, when thinking, I'm gonna drill holes here, 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 and here. And I'm gonna use this twine. So basically, I'm gonna make these little loops on each uh, on each crossbone. Let's see how that goes. 
Uh, this is just a very flimsy plastic, so I'm just going to use a good old drill bit. And there's our start. So I actually, I changed my mind about the rope along the crossbones. I actually have some spare reusable zip ties. And I think it's just a little bit easier to get in there and take it out. Like the rope's already starting to frail at the seams. And from, from a distance, I think you even notice it less. So, yep. I'm going to give that a try and see how that looks. Yeah, if you're going to get zip ties, I recommend reusable zip ties. Especially with uh, when you're using it for decorations. And there we go. Alright, crow's nest is almost finished. What I'm going to do now is drill uh, a hole in the bottom with uh, Broken Tea as my guide. Uh, it's the same size as the new cross that I have. Um, it's two inches. So I'm going to drill a hole two inches so it'll slip on. But also I'm going to drill some smaller holes on the side here and either use rope or zip ties to attach it to um, the horizontal beams of the mast. a little too crazy it's starting to crack on me now oh darn oh darn that's before I go any further let's see what I can do to fix this all right what I end up doing was actually using just a simple box cutter um, and cut along because it was starting to like keep on cracking right to the edge it was about here or so so what I did was actually I, I cut right ahead of the crack, you know, cut it off of the pass. Um, not a perfect circle, but at least hopefully it'll keep it from cracking even more. And now I, I drilled uh, holes closer to the edge, which I think is a little more sturdy. And that's where I'll put the, the zip ties to secure it to the vertical mast, vertical part of the mast. Uh, here's hoping. I was about to connect the crow's nest to it, but because this hole is now so much bigger, it won't sit flat. Even with this, uh, with the, the zip ties, it'll kind of lean one way. A little bit's fine, but it was like either this way or that way. So I'm thinking, since I already got these holes drilled, I can use this uh, wire. Um, like it kind of looks like a rope covered wire. I already, I already had this for other past projects. I think maybe like have a U this way and have a U this way. So when the goes around it, hopefully it'll keep it a little more center. Let's see how it goes. All right, it kind of looks like a mess, but it's holding together. So I got this um, twine covered uh, steel wire going around this end and going around this end. I don't know, it's hard to see with the shadows. But I got zip ties on the bottom side here. And I actually poked holes through the sail. And at this point I don't really care. And also from a distance, I don't think you'll even really notice it. Let's see how it is from the ground. Not too shabby. I am really digging it. That's pretty cool. An honestly gone pirate mast. But what good is having a pirate mast if you don't have a pirate ship? Looks like I'll have to make me a pirate ship. <laughs> 